Ali, talk to us a little bit how the company works and what the biggest revenue driver is to get to this $28 billion valuation. Yeah, absolutely. So we help companies take massive amounts of data they have in the cloud and do artificial intelligence, data science, and machine learning on it. But the way it works is companies already have vast amounts of data on these what's called data lakes that the cloud providers uh, provide. Uh, but today, to get value out of it, they have to copy it to other places. They have to copy it into data warehouses and other systems. We've cracked the code on how to combine these data warehouses with the data lakes in what we call the lake houses uh, directly so that they don't need to copy the data out. They can directly start doing machine learning, data science, and make their organizations much more efficient. So at $28 billion, I mean, should you be a, a public company? Why stay private? at all, and, and what's your plan to get to the public markets? Yeah, I mean, the way right now the private markets work is that there's a lot of access to capital. Uh, you can also get the same investors that you can actually get in public markets, as we showed in this round, we brought in all the big mutual funds. Um, you can actually provide liquidity to your employees and you know you can get quite a bit of press. So, you know, the urgency that used to be that you have to go public to you know get access to capital markets, you don't quite need that. So we're taking our time. There's quite a few things that I actually think that you want to do that are strategic that you cannot do when you're public. So we're doing those now. Um, you know, some folks out there are saying you're the next snowflakes, and I'm sure that you are looking at the options, whether it's a SPAC or could it be a direct listing, given that you just raised this funding and, and maybe don't need any more? Well, we're looking at all the different options. There are pros and cons to these. Uh, you know, direct listing, of course, is less dilution. Uh, but then on the other hand, with the IPO, you can build a much deeper relationship uh, with the mutual funds that invest in you, but you're doing that at a discount, right? You're discounting it and it dilutes the company more. So we're looking at the different options. I mean, we're seeing the different companies actually utilize them and we're learning from them. So curious, given that Amazon um, is one of your backers, what your take is on, on the passing of the baton from Jeff Bezos to Andy Jassy, especially given that Andy Jassy is, is, is so big in, in your world, which is the cloud. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan. Uh, Andy's amazing. Uh, he actually had something to do with the investment in this particular round of Databricks. Um, and I think it's great for us all around. And I think it's good for uh, Amazon as well uh, to have him at the helm. Um, and I also think, you know, there are lots of other people that, that will be taking over at AWS. We look forward to working with them. So I think this is good. And it shows how important these cloud services are and how important they're going to be. And it's a testament to how important data and AI also will be uh, going forward. We spoke to a former longtime Amazon employee yesterday who said she felt sorry for whoever it was that was going to fill Andy Jassy's shoes leading AWS. And I'm curious if you think him um, shifting his focus to not just AWS, but the entire company opens up a competitive, competitive advantage potentially for Microsoft and Alphabet, which I know is, is another one of your backers. Well, I think there's going to be a place for all these different uh, cloud companies. I don't think any of them is going to go away. Uh, and they have different strengths and weaknesses. Uh, Amazon is going to continue to double down on its strengths. You know, it's really developer focused. You know, um, you know, Microsoft has the enter enterprise relationships, the enterprise agreements, uh, and you know, Google with the AI. So, you know, I think there's a place for each of them. Um, I don't think that's going to change. So, uh, where do you see the the evolution of cloud and AI? I mean. A decade ago, when we started Bloomberg Technology, the cloud was just this nascent thing. Now everybody wants multiple clouds. Where will we be in another decade? Yeah, that's a great question. I actually think that there's a secular trend that's going on that people maybe don't think about, which is that multi-cloud is going to become more and more a thing. I hear it from enterprises all the time. They're saying, you know, we actually need to make sure that we're not putting all our eggs in one basket. So how can we make sure that we're multi-cloud? So companies like Databricks then ensure that, you know, you don't have to pick one cloud. You can pick vendors that work across them and you can then partner with all of them. That's one thing. But I also think AI is a thing that you're going to see much, much more of. So now we talk about cloud computing. In 10 years, it's all just going to be about AI, machine learning, data science. So how does that impact your Databricks's priorities? Yeah, I mean, our focus is to democratize and simplify AI further. Right now, it's not super simple for enterprises to get the value of AI. Our mission is make it simpler and simpler so every enterprise can get value of it. If you think of a company like Google, they wouldn't even be here today if it wasn't for data and AI. Well, that's not quite true about all the other enterprises out there, but in 10 years, that will be the case. They either will have AI, just like Google had, or they're going to be put out of business and some other forward tech company in Silicon Valley or somewhere else 
we'll replace them.